What's up, Brian Tong here with your Googlelicious for everything Google we can pack inside of a show. Now next week, Tuesday, August the 2nd, is Samsung's big reveal for the Note 7, but new leaks continue to pour out from Android Authority. This time, it's the lock screen and security settings that shows irises as one of the options, but their disclaimer also details how the iris scanning may not work if you're wearing eyeglasses or sunglasses, well, duh on that one, or either color contact lenses and even circular contact lenses. Now, if you've had LASIK eye surgery, it might not work as well, and you'll need to hold it at eye level in well-lit conditions. With all those caveats, it'll be very interesting to see how well it actually performs. Now, other screenshots from this show off the S Pen Air commands and the ability to video capture specific parts of your screen. But details of the iris scanning setup reveal that users will be asked to position their eyes into two circles at a distance of 25 to 35 centimeters from their face. Patently Mobile uncovered the Samsung patent that outlines how its iris scanner works. Now, the iris recognition system uses three lenses to capture the image and then checks the iris of the user based on the image it's generated and will also use images of the user's face for additional information. Right now, it might not be fast enough to replace a fingerprint scanner, but we'll see how it all plays out. And in the most important Samsung news of the day, the Samsung One font has become the company's universal typeface for all of its products. Like Apple and Google, Samsung now has their own font. So to be important in this world, you need a font, like everyone's doing it. Well, that in Pokemon Go. In Google news, Google has lost the title as world's favorite company to Apple, but on a technicality. Future Brand takes the 100 largest companies by their market cap size and asks 3,000 consumers and industry professionals questions and then ranks them by what they call perception strength and not their financial strength. Google dropped all the way to 21st overall because it's now part of Alphabet. No one really knows Alphabet and people still call them Google, like even in this show. Number two was Microsoft, number three was Samsung, and number four was Walt Disney. Google's phone app gets a nice update that will now warn you when you're getting potential spam calls. The incoming call will show a red screen and label it as suspected spam caller. It's only available for Nexus and Android One devices right now with the latest update on the Google Play Store. Also, Google Maps is getting a few visual changes and cleaning up their look. It's subtle, but Google is taking away road outlines which allows for a cleaner look and it's a good thing. Typography for points of interest is more distinguishable on the map and it stands out. They've also added an orange shading to areas of interest where there are activities to do and a new color scheme to help you easily differentiate between man-made or natural features. So let's be honest, it's a slower news week. But this might be my favorite story of the week and especially for my comic book readers on Android devices. The Google Playbooks app is introducing a new feature called Bubble Zoom and it's freaking cool. Using Google's object recognition tech, it can now recognize speech bubbles in comics and Bubble Zoom expands the speech bubbles with a tap on your mobile device while keeping the art exactly the same, making it easier to read. Even on a tablet, there are times where this comes in handy and this really needs to be everywhere. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.